Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to this ceremony to commemorate a gift to our city. Uh, this is the first public space labyrinth uh, in Jacksonville. The, the origin of labyrinths is debated, but there is no doubt, debate that they have helped with meditation, prayer, and peaceful reflection. Um, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce uh, some of the folks that are here uh, that are representing the city. I have uh, Councilman Randy Thomas over here. I have Councilman Bob Warden. I also have our Parks and Rec Director, Mr. Bill Ross here, or his chair, the chairman here today of the board. Uh, hopefully I haven't overlooked anyone. Uh, Paul Wiggins from the school board. I did see Paul. There he is right there. Hey, Paul, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, let us uh, be, therefore begin our ceremony by asking uh, uh, that Reverend Jody Lampley uh, provide an invocation for us. Jody. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the gift of your creation. And we thank you for a place where we can come and reflect on our lives, on what you're calling us to do, how you're calling us to be a community. We ask that you would bless this place and bless our time together as we reflect on how we might serve our community and how we might minister to all people in our area. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Our Jacksonville Commons Labyrinth is in place because of the driving force of Lee Eford. Today we give great thanks to her for bringing this vision to the city. We thank Charles and Lee and the Richard Ray family for their gift of the labyrinth. Admittedly, a labyrinth was not in the planning for any public space in our city. Its healing powers, though, have been testified to for centuries. But its place in Jacksonville, where many other parks, has been absent. Generally, the, the, labyrinth, the benefits of the labyrinth and the presence of labyrinths are scarce here. It's not a maze, but a single path that winds towards its center, way, it winds its way toward the center. The person walking it uses the same path to return from the center and the entrance becomes the exit. Many cultures have left us labyrinth patterns around the world. Pottery, tablets, tiles, and other surfaces as old as 5,000 years have been found with designs of labyrinths. Most patterns are based on spirals and circles. Some are clearly inspired by nature. Others are designed by man. Such is the design found in the use by Native Americans, which call their work the medicine wheel. The Celts, or Celts, whatever your <laughs> Celts, describe the labyrinth as the never-ending circle. One feature labyrinths have in common is that they have one path that winds in a circuitous way to the center. Great cathedrals, churches, such as our own Northwoods Methodist, and now our park hosts labyrinths. According to the Labyrinth Society and others, they are worldwide and are used to quiet the mind, recover a balance to life, and are used to encourage meditation, insight, self-reflection, stress reduction, and to discover innovation and celebration. On behalf of the city of Jacksonville, the city council, and our people, I want to thank Lee and Charles for their vision and to the Eford and Ray families for their generous gift to our people. The labyrinth was constructed by Jeff Loster of White Oak High School as a summer gift to our city. Thank you, Jeff. He was joined by students Sorrell Thomas, Tristan Laster, Austin Kaiser, and Thaddeus Waters. <clears throat> Thank you to each. Are you all here? Right here. Thank you, guys. Thaddeus is in the Army now. He's over in the Midwest. Bless his heart. Good for Thaddeus. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate that heart. It really is a good, 
good job you did here. It's a great piece of work. The labyrinth, uh, uh, see, they were frequently joined by Lee and uh, who, who provided logistic support, <laughs> lunches, and refreshments to the crew and during the hottest part of the summer of 2013. She even laid some bricks. She convinced Marion Howard to give us the rocks that surround the site from his farm, and Jimmy Kellum helped to get them here. And I wish now to call forth Lee for, and uh, to whom we owe a great uh, debt of uh, gratitude. Lee. This is greetings to the brave today. This lets you know who your friends are. Um, hopefully the labyrinth offers a place where people can come and shut the door on the distractions that pull us in so many directions and have a quiet inward reflection. Walking the labyrinth is personal and individualized. I personally prefer to walk it barefooted, weather permitting. I pause at the entrance and I set a purpose for the walk. As I enter and I wind around the design, I talk to myself about the purpose of this walk. When I arrive to the middle, where I am now, I wait. I try to quiet my thoughts. That's pretty hard to do. Walking out, I try not to talk. I try to let my mind be quiet and listen. I would like to close with a quote by Jack Welsh. Good business leaders create a vision, articulate the vision, passionately own the vision, and restlessly and relentlessly drive to completion. I did have the vision. Glenn Hargett helped me articulate it. Debbie Ray Rouse, Richard Woodruff, and Charles passionately owned the vision. Jeff Lossiter and his young men relentlessly drove it to completion. Everyone here today has had a part in this vision. And that I am truly thankful for. There are several people who worked on this that are not able to be here, and I want them to know how much I appreciate what they have done. I hope that we have created something here that will withstand time and give back to the people who will pause and take the time to walk it. Thank you all for coming out in this weather. And at the end, please join us over at the Commons for just some warmth and some refreshments. Thank you. Uh, due to an unexpected death in the family, uh, Debbie Ray Rouse has asked me to uh, read a statement on her behalf, and I'm, which I'm glad to be able to do so. The Ray family deeply regrets not being able to be here today for this special dedication due to a death in the family. We want to thank all of the amazing people who made this day possible. The passing of Richard Ray in 1996 put into motion a chain of events that are ongoing and culminating <clears throat> in this beautiful and, un and unique park that we see around us here. Um, the labyrinth is a gargantuan effort. I mean, it, by so many to bring another unique facet to this park. And, uh, you know, I, I really just love this because one of the things that I do, and I'm going off script, Glenn, so I'm sorry. You know, one of the things that I do by my nature when I'm trying to deal with an with a issue or, or a complex problem is I have a tendency to want to walk and think at the same time. It's almost like a, a meditation. I'm thinking, hey... <laughs> A good place to come and do that at now. I mean, it, it, you know, um, I really, really do think this is a beautiful piece of work, Jeff. You really did a great job. You and your guys, your, your kids there, they did a great job. Uh, we would especially like to thank the city of Jacksonville, especially Richard Woodruff, Dr. Woodruff. I don't even know if he's here. Uh, I didn't see him today. Um, and Glenn uh, Hargett for what they've done. The City Recreation and Parks Department. Lee and Charles Eford for their creative energy in developing this project. Jeff, Jeff Loster and his hard working crew. Jimmy Kellum and Marion Howard for the landscaping rocks and all those who have dedicated many volunteer hours, blood, sweat, and tears making 
this day possible. And those are the words of Debbie Ray. Our Richard is uh, smiling at the thought of the thousands of people who will come to pray, meditate, relax, and enjoy this beautiful spot. This is another just a nice tribute to Richard who did so much for this community. As we conclude this ceremony, let's, uh, let us ask for a blessing from the lead pastor of Trinity United Methodist Church, the Reverend George Speak. You know, it's always a privilege to participate in ceremonies and services similar to this. So I feel that all of us who are gathered here today, together we are dedicating this place. We gather to get today in the presence of God to give praise for God's abiding love and grace. We gather to celebrate the gift of life and to consecrate this place of prayer, meditation, and comfort. Most loving God, without you no words or works of our hands have meaning. Accept this gift of our hands as a symbol of our devotion. May all who gather here in quiet meditation find peace and rest. May they find soothing for their souls as they sit under the branches of these trees. Follow this path of devotion and faith, and may your love envelop them and your, with your spirit. Grant each of us your blessing as we dedicate this space to your glory and honor, that it may be an enduring witness of your love and grace. This we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The labyrinth can provide great service to our community. Let us in with two items. First, our great appreciation to Lee and the Eford and Ray families and to Jeff Loster and the team he assembled. And for, and for the second, let us borrow some words from the Veritas organization, a group dedicated to the advancement of labyrinths. May this be a path of prayer, a walking meditation, a crucible of change, a watering hole for the spirit, and a mirror of the soul. And I pray that it serves its function for our community. Thank you all for coming out and braving the elements today. Thank you. Thank you, Lee.